to Dwayne and Nadia, Food, Travel, and Fun. I'm Dwayne, and I'm back in the kitchen. And it's been a while since we've done any cooking or uh, put a recipe out there for you, so we are definitely overdue. So I thought I would give it a go with an old favorite that I haven't made in a long time, but I happen to be growing some zucchini. And they're really starting to look great right now. This one's a little funny, but uh, that's a pollination thing. And, uh, but no big deal, it's still beautiful, really firm, great zucchini. And I am going to make some zucchini bread for us today. And I've got all uh, my ingredients gathered up here, ready to do it. There are a lot of different ways that people do this. Uh, I personally like to do it with the brown sugar and I actually really like it with raisins in it. A lot of people use walnuts or almonds, different types of nuts that they like. I don't like any of the nuts and I'm gonna skip the raisins this time because my wife's not a big raisin fan and I want her to enjoy some of it right along with me. So, oh, she just said she's good with gold and raisins. So maybe I could sneak a couple in there because I love them. So anyways, so I've got all the stuff here. We'll go over the ingredients uh, really quick. It's not, this is a, actually a pretty straightforward recipe. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is obviously you preheat your oven, 350. I use a uh, nine by five inch pan. Big pan, I'm doing a small recipe. It's only gonna need a couple of cups of the zucchini, so I'm not sure how much of this zucchini I'm gonna actually grate into it. And you don't peel the zucchini, you don't do anything. You don't really want giant zucchini because the seeds get big and you start getting the seeds. that They don't really, I, don't, I find that they actually leave a little bit of a chew inside and you don't want your bread to have that extra at all. Uh, I have this grater and you do use the large side on the grater. A lot of people have those box graters with the four sides. It's essentially the same thing. Like I said, we're gonna need about a couple of cups of this. We're only gonna use about a cup and a half of flour. You know, you get, it needs some oil. I got my cinnamon, my nutmeg, uh, vanilla extract, a little bit of salt, a couple eggs, baking powder, baking soda, and bring it all together. Some. We use canola oil. You can use different types of vegetable oil, whatever you prefer. You like corn oil, doesn't matter. As long as you add some oil in there. You know, you, I like to use the Pam spray to spray the pan and prep it so that it releases nice and easily. And that's really it. Bring, bring it all together. I'll show you, you do mix like a wet and a dry uh, ingredient setup. And I'll show you that as well. And it goes in the oven, it cooks in about 50 minutes, a little under an hour. It does, basically the old toothpick test does work, where you stick a toothpick in, comes out clean, you're good to go. So you don't want it too shake, you want to sh if you shake it and it shakes a little too much in the middle, it's too jiggly, it isn't ready. So that's why the toothpick te test really does work. This is one of the moistest, if, uh, the most moist, I guess, <laughs> recipes. It, it really does really well. After you take it, you let it cool, you can wrap it, put it in the fridge, and you'll get several days of really nice bread out of this. So let me uh, get prepping here. I'll probably uh, speed through a little bit of it for you, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so uh, really quick, Nydia okayed the golden raisins. Uh, this is a third cup. I'm only adding about a quarter of a cup of them. And there was one ingredient I show, you probably saw, but I didn't mention, and that's the applesauce. You add about a half a cup of applesauce into this recipe, and that definitely helps maintain that moisture level and adds that touch of sweetness. So you can use unsweetened or sweetened, your preference. Usually I would use the unsweetened, but I got some sweet stuff here. So it's okay, I'm eating bread, we're getting carbs. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta let yourself live a little. So just like I said, just wanted to let you know a couple ingredients uh, that I didn't mention earlier. I wanted to include that. And once again, uh, we'll be right back and I will st show you how I start bringing it all together. So as you saw, I quickly knocked out grating that one zucchini. It was actually pretty quick even in normal time. And you don't want to like squeeze it or strain it or anything. You just want to take it exactly as you get it and just make up your two cups. It really looks like the one zucchini is gonna give me all I need right here. So, but 
We'll uh, measure it out as I go and see what I get. This has a cup right there. And we'll see how much I end up with. And personally, I'm thinking if I go just a little over on zucchini, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I just don't wanna go too far off the actual recipe amounts. Cause that's two cups right there. And there's still a little bit. So yeah, so one nice size zucchini, not huge. So I've seen real people off their farms come up with really, really big zucchini. And you have to actually cut it in half and scoop out the center core where the, where the seeds are. Because this is nice and clean. You can't even tell where any seeds are. It's just really the way you want to go. So let me see what I got left here. And if it's not much over, it's about a third of a cup, I'm adding it. Why? Because Nidia wants to eat it. So, and that little bit extra is not enough to throw this recipe off. So there you go. So you check it out. That is beautiful right there. So let me uh, get a little bit more organized, get some things in measuring cups, and we'll come right back and I'll show you how we put it together. See you soon. All right, so we're gonna do this in two parts. This is gonna be the wet mix. And the zucchini goes into the wet. Once again, they got, I used a little over, but there's two cups of zucchini. I had two eggs, large eggs, which I beat, like to beat up a little bit. So I beat them together before I mix them in. I'm using one third of a cup of the canola oil also going in. Our half cup of applesauce. Once again, that could be sweetened or unsweetened, your preference. Uh, most often I do see it as an unsweetened addition. The raisins. Completely optional. A lot of people like to go with nuts. I prefer raisins. I've got my one cup of white sugar. My quarter cup of pack. I like dark brown sugar. A lot of people, um, when they do this recipe, they use light brown sugar, but I prefer the dark. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we like the real vanilla extract, of course. You can use whatever you can find, but there you go. And I'm gonna start mixing this up. And there's really no worrying about anything like uh, over, overdoing it on this. That's really not, a, a not an issue with this. I do like to make sure that it is nicely blended. And I have a couple uh, hard spots in my brown sugar. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't leave them really big. You can soften it. You can microwave brown sugar for a few seconds. It'll soften right up and it gets real easy to break it down. Uh, I just didn't. Although maybe I should have because that was a pretty hard spot. <laughs> but now it's looking pretty nice. And I don't mind, it's kind of, kind of like someone gets a little treat in one of those little bites of the bread if they happen to get the extra brown sugar. So, I know, uh, diabetic, really supposed to not enjoy this so much, but uh, I really do have a sweet tooth and I love it. And I won't deny it. So there you go, and you can see right now, it's nice mixed up. And that is the, the wet part of this. And we're gonna add the dry ingredients to the wet. And now we'll make up the dry side. So here I have one and a half cups of all-purpose white flour. I am gonna use half a teaspoon of baking powder. 
a half a teaspoon of baking soda as well. Quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Nice ground up cinnamon. And I'm gonna use the same one, but I am not gonna fill it. I'm really looking for about an half the amount, about eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. I find nutmeg to be very strong, but it adds a beautiful note if you do it in very small amounts. You saw nice, subtle, small amounts, and you can't go wrong. Okay. And last, let me see if I can do this. Oh yeah, it's going fine. And another quarter teaspoon of salt. So that's our dry mix. I'm just gonna bring all that together. That's it, just make sure it's blended well. Nice and simple. Looks good. I'm gonna get my pan ready. And it is, it's a nine by five loaf pan. And you really wanna make sure you give a nice coating if you're using the cooking spray. A lot of people will flour it. I don't like to flour it with this particular recipe. I just like to go with the spray. Bring over the big batch. There's my dry ingredients on top. Mix it together. You're just trying to bring it together till it's actually nice and evenly mixed. You're not, you don't have to continue mixing and mixing with this. Just get it, all your dry ingredients nice and uh, totally integrated, totally just mixed in and You'll be fine. Once it starts to look like a batter, you're in good shape. I keep scraping the sides so there's nothing dry stuck to the side of the pan. Get it all in there. And there she is. She's ready to go. Here, I'll bring it up close, give you a sh so you can see it. It's not, uh, see, it's still, it's a little, it's, a, it's not a thick batter, it's fairly thin. But, that's all you need. Spread it nice and evenly in this pan. And I probably should have a rubber, rubber spatula to get everything, but I just didn't bring one. So I'm just gonna get as much of it as I can with this fork here and call it a day. Yeah, we did a really nice job of getting everything in there. As you can see, the pan, pretty clean, ready to go. So that's about two thirds full, which is perfect. Kind of like you do when you're making muffins. You never want to really go much past two thirds because it's going to rise up a lot, especially with the, uh, the baking powder that's in there and the baking soda. So um, in the oven, it's 350. I'm going to set the timer for 45 minutes. I'm going a little early. I expect it to need about 55 minutes, 50 to 55, but I like to check it a little bit ahead of time. Uh, I will give you guys a quick peek probably halfway through and we'll, uh, there you go. You'll see, what, see how uh, she looks. Want to take a nice close look at it? There you go. You can see all those nice pieces of zucchini sitting inside there, ready to go. And we'll show you in about two seconds. All right, so it's a little over 30 minutes in. Give you a quick peek. See what we got here. Oh yeah, she's still got a bit of jiggle, but looking good. It's starting to rise nicely. Put that back in. Yep, definitely got a good 20 minutes or so to go, and we'll see you then. All right, so it's been about 50 minutes. Uh, starting to look really good. Color's beautiful. I see a bit of a jiggle. Oh, oh yeah. It's coming out clean though. Look at that, totally clean. I'm gonna do a little bit of a, man, it's really, 
really looks good. I mean, that's, that's beauty. You know what? I'm still giving it another two minutes to keep me honest. Timer two. And then we'll take it out, let it cool. I'm not cutting into this tonight. I'm gonna let it completely cool. I'm going to cover it up, put it in a container, put it in the fridge overnight, let it really set up nice. And then in the morning we'll cut into that and I'll show you guys just how nicely this thing comes out because it's really, it's okay when it's warm and soft, but once it's stiffened up and really kind of set, that's when it's really the best. You know, and you do cream cheese, you do butter, whatever you happen to like to put on there, you put on there, or you just eat it as is, as how I am definitely gonna try it plain the way it is initially, and maybe add some butter to it afterwards. So, uh, that's it, she's looking good. She'll be out in a minute, and I will show you in the morning, uh, slicing it up and trying it out. See you soon. All right, guys, oh, there she is. Looking really nice. Came out so clean. Uh, it's still a little too soft to show, but that's uh, a beauty. But yeah, look, there you go. Just barely, I think there was a raisin stuck over there. But aside from that, that's perfect. So I'm gonna let that cool, still so tender and jiggly. And we will be back in the morning. See you then. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm back, it's early. I'm gonna grab my coffee. Yep, well, it's had the night to set up. It's pretty well set up. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things. For one, I'm just gonna try it first. So, there we go. You can see inside, she's sliced up really nice. And I'm just gonna try it. Oh yeah, super moist. Lots of flavor, brown sugar's coming through. And that bite, I didn't get a raisin, but I see one right there, so. Oh yeah. Everyone, this is easy to make. Zucchini is so available this time of year right now. I mean, I'm growing it, but it's in all the markets, all the stores, everybody's got it. And this is such a nice bread that lasts. And it is on the heavy side, so it's filling. But, and family-wise, I know we have a lot of family. And a lot of them won't necessarily even touch zucchini, but they'll eat this. So let me um, show you one more thing. I'll be right back. I'm gonna see if I can convince Nidia to take a bite before she heads out. And um, I'll show you what I'm thinking. Give me a sec. So, yep, you can put a little butter on it and eat it with that. You could use uh, cream cheese, which people like to do. And me, I buttered both sides, and I'm gonna saute it. Um, well, let's grill, yeah. Grill, saute. Saute is what you do with onions and vegetables. Yeah, well, I put butter on there, so it's getting sauteed. You know, it doesn't have to be a veggie to be sauteed. It could be sauteed bread. Fine, I'm grilling it. Don't let Nadia, who's not in this video, teach you. <laughs> Yeah, she thinks she's in the video, but I get the mic on. She's, you probably can't hear her, and you think I'm just talking to myself, but I'm talking to a disruptor. That's who. So, anyways, uh, yeah, it's starting to sizzle. It's starting to come along. Here, let me grab this. Look at that. Sizzle, sizzle. I can see it. We're going to give this a minute or two, and I'll show you what it looks like in the end, and I'll try it out. So there she is, browning up nicely, sizzling away. It's coming along. Oh, this is gonna be good, nice and warm. I'll show you in a minute. 
So there it is. I grilled it, as Nidia said. It's much softer, a lot more crunch. Nice and warm. Mm. That is excellent. Now we'll have a little something to snack on over the weekend as we uh, run around do our weekend stuff. And thank you for tuning in, checking it out. I will include the recipe in the comments below. Um, and that is it. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, there's a hundred variations on it. I've seen people add chocolate chips. I think I may have even once to it. You can, I've seen it with blueberries. I mean, there's just a lot of things you can do. You can, whatever works for you, whatever works for you. But this is a base recipe. Um, I said a lot of people do use the nuts. We don't, but there you go. If you, that's what you like, add them in. Don't be shy. Um, it's just kind of a nice place to start, a nice simple recipe, and it is just so good. And I got a lot of zucchini coming, so I am going to be making this again for family, friends, and maybe one of you out there who actually watched this video. So that's it, Dwayne and Nadia, Food Travel Fun. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, click the bell, get your notifications, and we will see you next time. Thanks.